Good day. This is your buddy Jim here at Saw Logs Plastic Hubs. I've got back off the cruise and I've got my race car stuff situated for a while. So I'm back in the machine shop tying up a, a project. So uh, I want you to uh, sit back, relax, enjoy. Uh, get comfortable in a chair, easy chair, or whatever. If you're on your wide screen, pull it up. Uh, you know, get kind of comfortable. With uh, so here's what we're doing today. I have been kind of featuring a little bit in the slop some tool hole, two quick change tool blocks that uh, they sent me from Mamco, the gentleman up there. They said it wouldn't fit none of their lathes and thought maybe that I could use them. Well, I, uh, they was instantly I seen the problem. They was look like CX-8 blocks. And I thought maybe that my friend Tom down at Hilltop could use them. So I took them down to Tom while he was moving before we got moved and took the blocks to him. We tried it on his Monarch, too small. So, I don't really know anybody that's local that had a C-size block on a lathe. Uh, like I say, Tom's the only person that I'm really acquainted with had a home shop with a big enough, bigger than a B-size block. So, I decided to try to convert them. And... If you've seen some of my videos, you've seen why I've welded and already pre-machined them up, squared them back up to fill in all the area and the voids and all that stuff. So, what today's video is, is the final machining. The dovetails, fitting it to the machine, making a few changes here and there uh, to get them where I could use them. Uh, my original plan was to give the cutoff holder to a friend. But today that changed a little bit because I cut it just a hair bit bigger and looser fit than I like to. And so, but I was too, also I got to looking at it and the cutoff tool, somebody had been using it, cut one side of it and made us grooving tools like snap ring. And I thought to myself, man, that would be handy because you wouldn't have to grind a whole high speed tool blip bit down. So, I decided to keep it too. So you'll see the whole process of the dovetails. I mean, not in intimate detail, but you'll see what we're doing, kind of get the general picture. Uh, the welding and stuff's already been in slop, so we're actually starting from where I want to cut the dovetails today and then all the little touch up work we've did. So I hope you enjoy that, uh, this video. I want to send a special thanks out to the boys at Mamco Machine for uh, sending the blocks down uh, and that's kind of what made this possible. So, no further ado, we're going to get into this video of machining these blocks up. So, uh, hope you enjoy it. I'm finally getting around to doing this. So, uh, uh, I'm going to work on this a little bit today and uh, and see where I at least try to get this one done. I'm not going to bore you to death with this. I'm just going to go ahead. Right now I'm going to find zero. And go from there. The, the steps are going to be pretty simple. We're going to find zero. Put the fly cutter in. Fly cut the top again. Just a little bit. Just to clean it up. And then after we fly cut it. We're going to come back. And then we'll start machining the dovetail out. This is the uh, noise that the mill is cold. We're going to we're going to pop a little ten thousand stud. I'll show you. All I've done is just dial in about ten thousand. Same place. So 
this is why anytime you want this stuff around welding or machining and I'm just taking like 10,000 stuff. I don't want to take much off. Just enough to clean it up. And I already milled it once to get rid of all the imperfections of the welding. So now all this is doing is cleaning it up to give me a, to make sure that everything's true. This is actually probably more important than this project and the standard cutting does pay it. So, <coughs> there we go. Alright, now, I'm just taking that very first cut. Boy, take a hundred thousand pounds of center to see what we got to work with. See if we touch any things on the sides. Kind of just get an idea of what we got. We may have to go up and down just to get us a place to work from the man. The idea is to see if I can get a place so I can measure both sides of this so I can do the milling. All right. Looks like I've got it. So let me get everything I need. What I'm seeing is my very last step pass. And I'm going to take a still picture when I get this done with the cell phone and let you see how good it looks. It's actually the, there's only one little spot over here in the corner I didn't quite get enough well done. But outside of that, we're good. So I'm well pleased how it's <coughs> how the finished product's turning out. As you can see with the video of how clean it looks. I've done a real good job on this and welded it. So I put a lot of time in the weld. There's a lot of wire involved in welding in this too, by the way. Here we start. Now obviously, the, the way I set these up is I use about 10 thousandths off the bottom. And, uh, and basically I touch them. The reason I zero everything is it's easier to work with. So now I know that I can control what goes off of each side and kind of try to keep the same number so we cut the same way. So I always try to set my mills up the more I do traditional cutting. So and any time you're doing dovetails, the deeper you go, the more you take off. So the first few cuts, you get kind of aggressive, then you kind of back off. With this, I'm really not cutting no tough material because this is this welding wire. So I'll bring you back as we get deep. Okay, there we go. It's on. Now I've got other work to do to it to finish it, which you'll see, you know, obviously. This screw wouldn't come out, so I just cut it off. So that's why I'm going to probably just re-drill. I'll just probably try to find the center and put one of my studs in it. Actually, it won't work because it's way out here. I'll have to redraw, drill another one anyway over here. So, with that being said, we've got more work to do here yet. But, hey, what do you think about that? That looks pretty good, don't it? So... That's where we at so far. Okay, here you go. This is the completed unit. And uh, I know I'm going to run out of battery. So uh, I'll bring you back. Now, I've, but this is the completed one. I'll take a picture of it. And uh, this is the one that's completed. And I'm going to set up and do the uh, other one now. This is the cutoff holder. My plans for the cutoff holder is actually this is going to be a gift. <coughs> so when I finish. Now, if you've noticed, I'm going to cut the dovetail using the Y axis. The reason I'm doing that is because this is at an angle and I can't turn it and use power feed. So I might do all this by hand feed. But it's basically going to be the same process. 
the the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to touch it here and here and center it so I'll have a center to work from then we'll fly cut it right lightly I may not fly cut this and I may just use the three quarter mill and pass it and save changing one cutter and then we'll cut the slot out the center and then we'll go from there so uh, I got to get over here and reset my clock because I haven't done it yet to regular time and then we're going to get started whittling this thing down I'll bring you back all right now we're going to come in here and we're going to do the turn it all off and this has all got to be hand fed unfortunately because this block being the way it is we're doing the same thing that we've done before we're taking a hundred thousandths but let's go ahead and take our first cut touch it go in a hundred thou I guess it's some room to measure do all our double checks that we think we need to do and this is the easiest way to do it it's just like that right there so right, then you just do your little shift and then you make your next cut this job you see how good a welding you did because this is what really is going to make your edge up on the other so and this is also why it's handy to work off of center because especially the DRO it makes it nice, nice and easy it's basically what you can do is do the math get your center sets and you can just come through here and this makes life a lot simpler I say I've done so many of these a dovetail is practically something I got on my I mean I'm not saying I'm really really good at it I've just done a lot of them because of cutting tools down or whatnot so right there that gives me my my very first place I'll check to see if I'm close to the tool yeah I'm gonna have a little bit of breakout right there because I didn't get that corner really good but it's really hard to weld this stuff up I'll check the size and we'll be back I have this wedge block and this is what I use it for instead of measuring it anymore I measured this out like it uh, so I should have moved about seven thousandths I went ahead on each side so I went ahead and I went ten to give us a little bit of slack which is always good Ooh, got a splinter right in my finger folks now let's go to the lathe see if this locks up that's a little looser than I like, but I'm not going to re-weld it. But I've also decided I'm going to keep this holder, and I'm going to show you why. Somebody has taken this thing and used these cutoff tools and ground into them like little grooving tools. And I never have thought of that. Man, that'd be perfect instead of just using high-speed steel for little grooving jobs. So I'm going to keep the holder just to do that with it. I'm not going to plan on using the cutoff. But it's, you know, I need to put little grooves and stuff. Let's get me a couple extra cutoff blades or use the other side and just grind the cutoff blades into it but, or make grooving out tools out of it. So that's this one. I still got to work on the other one. So we're going to do some more work on it. Uh, I'll be bring you back. next problem I have is this the original set screw here it was the original screw that was in this thing did not work it basically gave me a fit so we're going to just have to do something with it so my strategy is since I worked on the other one 
is to go ahead and drill this out and we'll just drill it out and put 3 8 screw in it or set 16 depending on how big a mess I made. So, center drilled it, tried to center it up by eyeball, and we're going to see what we get into. What we're doing is just taking a 3 8 drill, going down in here, we're just going to put a 3 8 adjuster in it, similar to what we did it up doing with the other one. We'll just re thread everything and adjust it to 3 8, which is not a big deal. See what it done, I guess, when I didn't think to take this one out while I was welding. So let me see what I've got here. Well, turn your head, Mr. Pete. You know, he don't like air. Sometimes you got to use it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to try to re-thread this thing. Whoa. We'll end up getting, all right, we're going to go ahead and go through, which is good. That'll allow us to get us some room to work. Okay. What I'm going to do is just try to see it's, try to deburr it with the deburr tool. If I can get one or just get, I'm going to take a larger drill bit. Try to deburr it that way. All right, there's the completed BXA holder. Uh, uh, modified the BXA. Uh, I'll put a tool in it as needed. So that's how that turned out. And uh, because this one here had that little problem in there where they, uh, I, I jammed the screw or something, it broke during the welding process. I had to drill it out. So I went in and put three eighths in it too, just like I did the other. So let me blow a place up, clean the place off on the mill, and I'll lay these tools over here and we'll talk about them in a second. Now, I have an incredible amount of time in these tools. Uh, I've probably got at least eight or nine hours of my time in these tools, both of them. Uh, I could have, I should have, hindsight, I should have been a little more careful on my final machining here, but this is still a usable tool, and I'm not going to go back to the trouble to fix it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it and use it like I told you earlier, or have, there's somebody's regrouped these into grooving tools and that's a neat idea I can just order some blades and keep them around for nothing else but cut right uh, those tools and this since I've already done the tool let's that'd be handy for that and that's already set on center this one you know it's like everything else you start to mess with this stuff you run into all kind of stuff the screws, if you've seen these things originally, they had to set screws down in them. I had to get them out. And then when I was welding all this up, I didn't think to take the center screw out. And But then I start trying to chase screws. Decide I'm going to try to use metric. Don't have a good metric tap. So that's got to be a 7 16th that will go in that eventually. So... <laughs> you know, it's just, it's a lot of work just because I really wanted to do it. So, uh, if the guys up in Nam Mamco are watching this video, I finally got these tools done. Uh, it's taken at least, I probably, like I said, I probably got eight or nine hours in it between the welding and the machining and the, all the stuff. So, it's just not practical. <laughs> It's a challenge. So let me, I'm going to clean shop up and uh, we'll uh, talk to you in just a few minutes. Well, I hope you enjoyed me making a mess. Uh, basically, I'm going to put a disclaimer out just to begin with. This isn't practical. I took this on as a challenge. I would, and I think I've mentioned it, and you'll probably have heard it several times through this video. I would not, unless somebody dang near practically done like the boys at Mamco and give the blocks to you, it's really not worth the time that I put in them. 
I probably got a good eight or nine hours of time in these blocks from start to finish. Counting all the welding. I know I welded them on them probably an hour, an hour and a half. And then, you know, I re-squared them and machined them. And you've seen this kind of long in my slot videos uh, all along. So, you know, unless you just want to challenge like I did, I just wouldn't, you know, I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying, hey, this is something just to show you can be done. With that being said, obviously, this is a copyrighted production of James Denton and Sawlogs Plastic Hubs for your entertainment and enjoyment and some small education here on YouTube. Uh, again, I want to thank the uh, gentleman up at MAMCO for sending me the tool blocks down. Um, I hope that they like, if they, if they watch the video, I hope they see what I did and approve of it, and uh, it's a challenge. So, with all that also being said, you know I'm going to hawk you up for subscriptions again. We're really, 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 really close to 1K, and I would really love to get there. Uh, I have promised you, my subscribers, that we're not instantly going to chase money, but I would like to get up in the... Uh, pecking order of YouTube to get some better, you know, views. So, here's what you get for subscribing to the family. You get the privilege of being a subscriber to my channel. Number one, there are no annoying emails. Number two, no annoying phone calls. Number three, no religious organization coming to your doorstep trying to get you converted. That's three positive things for you can be a subscriber to this channel. It's that painless. And if you choose just to be a viewer, and you really don't want to subscribe to YouTube channels, well, I, I understand that. And I'm glad you came by today. I mean, it means a lot that the people who come by and watch my channel, you know, comments is something that I always welcome, good, bad, or indifferent. Especially on a project like this, who I've invested a lot of time, blood, money, and sweat energy into. I really appreciate the idea. Well, uh, give suggestions like what you, what could be done better, or why did you do this, or whatever. I enjoy the comments. So this has been a challenge, and I hope you enjoyed the little journey we've taken you on. So, with no further ado, I want to thank you again for stopping by and visiting here with me in the shop. Uh, hopefully, you'll at least got a little entertainment and stretched your mind just a little bit of the possibilities of what we can do sometimes if we really want to. That's really the whole point of the video, is to show you this is possible. Do you really want to do it? It's, it's up to you if you ever get in a situation. So... With all that being said, I hope you've had a great day, and uh, Thanksgiving is coming up. You know, we all got these things we need to be thankful for. Uh, so, like you say, smile every day. Try to be happy. Try to make the best out of a bad situation when you get in them. With all that being said, we're going to see you in that very, very, very next video, and I hope you enjoyed my video today. Thank you, and have a great day.